Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. This video is a little bit of an experiment because I thought it would be a good idea to take advantage of uh, the fact that my videos are on YouTube and uh, on YouTube you have really a lot of different music available and especially you have a lot of sort of unofficial music so you have a lot of live recordings of people playing that are not always the best quality as you've also seen some of the videos that I, I'm talking about here uh, but at the same time they're really great performances and most of the stuff that I do on my, my videos is of course very directly about uh, education, about explaining things and showing you how to play things or how I think about things or analyze things. And I'm gonna do that with these videos and, and, and with these performances as well a bit, but it's also just about finding really great performances and sharing those. Because I think, um, I mean, that's really what it's about. You know, uh, we play jazz guitar, we play guitar, because we love the music and um, that's something to keep in mind as well so I thought it would be really cool to just take some some of the maybe less famous uh, clips of songs that I know of uh, and then share them with you guys and talk a little bit about what is great about them uh, and maybe also it's gonna be sort of a way for you to discover some new artists or new groups or something like that so um, yeah that's kind of the experiment that's what I'm gonna try to do let me know in the comments if you think that this is uh, something that I could do more often. Uh, it's definitely something that I have more ideas of, of great, uh, great videos that are maybe less famous and that are well worth checking out if you're studying jazz guitar or if you're just interested in jazz guitar actually. So, um, so I could easily do more of them if that's something you're interested in. Uh, but yeah, I'm curious and let's see how this works out. It is kind of like a react video except I'm not reacting to it because I've seen these videos a lot of times and uh, um, I'm just sharing them really because I really like them and I also because the players I'm talking about are players that I really listen to a lot also. So for me they're, um, if you can say that, they're really an influence on, on, on how I play and how I think about music also. Uh, so yeah, that's what we're going to do. Let's just uh, get to the first video. <laughs> The first video is Jonathan Kreisberg playing The Song Is You and uh, this is really, it's pretty straight ahead actually. The, the Song Is You is a standard, they're actually all standards that I'm talking about in this video. A little bit, uh, probably a little bit of random if that's the case, but um, this is a long form standard so it's uh, it's twice as long everything, it's just the AVA. It, they're actually just playing it pretty straight ahead. Um, so the theme is stated and then uh, there's a break and a great pickup and then it's just straight into the groove and I think what I like about Jonathan Kreisberg in general is actually that his his timing and his uh, technique is so extremely clean most of the time so so he's really really nailing the the, the beat and, and uh, he's also really sort of nailing all his uh, his lines you can really hear that he want what he wants to play and it's it's also really clear what he's doing the idea is clear and and just the execution is really clear and that in itself is just very impressive I think and that's also what's really impressive about this, it's like there's a lot of energy, of course now I'm talking about it like it's very clinical, but really there's a lot of energy and it's just burning and there's um, uh, there's a lot happening, even though they're still uh, they're still just staying with the, with the groove, it's not opened up really that much, it's just, uh, it's, it's just like straight ahead, high energy jazz, uh, and I think the tempo is like 300 or something like this, so there's, there's a lot of stuff happening, he does a lot of stuff with um, I mean, of course, all the eight note lines are fine, and, and, and that's that's great. But there's also a lot of stuff that's connecting stuff over a larger context, which I think is is really essential for for playing interesting solos, really. Um, and he does that very well. He uses stuff from the theme. He moves stuff around in terms of rhythmically taking phrases and displacing them, and uh, especially with some of the theme things. And I think that's that's just really great. And also with this one, he plays um, he plays with a piano player. Uh, for God, I think it's Dave Kikoski. And uh, sort of the interaction between the two is also really nice because uh, I think the piano player is really in reacting to what he does quite a lot. And that works quite well in this recording. So that's that's also really great to see. For the rest, I think the rhythm section is, is not that interactive. Everything is just sort of um, in sort of a traditional harp up way, I guess. Like the rhythm section is just laying down a foundation, foundation and then he's he's on top and and and, uh, and coloring and, and going through uh, the solo and still manages to really keep it interesting and and, and come up with new ideas, creating longer lines and um, and doing some stuff there. He's um, 
I think most of his rhythmical ideas, maybe that's also just in contrast to some of the other uh, some of the other videos, the two other videos, is that uh, of course the high tempo, he stays really with the eight notes most of the time, there's not really a lot of other subdivisions or rhythmical modulations in that sense, it's mostly about groupings within that high tempo, uh, but it, yeah, it's just sort of a burning, uh, it's not a very long solo also, but it's just high energy burning jazz when it's really great, and it's especially nice to just see actually quite traditional playing from somebody like uh, Jonathan Kreisberg. <laughs> The second video is a really great showcase of how well Gilad Hexelman and Ari Huni play together. Uh, so this is from a gig in Smalls in New York, and it's also just some fairly random concert uh, video. The quality is, is actually, the sound is pretty good I think. The guitar is a little bit, a um, little bit muted, a little bit dark sounding, even for, for what, even if Gilad normally has quite a dark sound, he, he's usually not this dark, but okay, uh, that's wherever you put the camera probably. And uh, this is just really a great recording of how well they play together. So I think it's from a gig where they actually play with a saxophone player because you see a saxophone player walking off stage. Uh, and the song they're playing is uh, The Way You Look Tonight, which is also on, it's an arrangement that's also on one of uh, Iconic's uh, solo albums with the same trio. And um, I mean, it's just basically that standard. This is another like uh, long form standard, it's also an ABA. Uh, and the tempo is extremely high, even though here they're really, they're almost like pretending to be in, in a lower tempo most of the time. So everything where the Jonathan Kreisberg thing is really sort of straight ahead and just laying down the groove and um, um, and just playing it like that in a sort of typical hop up uh, way, then this this is everything but that almost. So there's almost never or maybe there is never any real walking in tempo, I'm not sure, I don't remember to be honest. Uh, but they're constantly moving around stuff, uh, the theme is being displaced from the beginning of, so I think it's like uh, two beats, already in the second A they're moving it two beats for half the time, or Gila is moving it. And there's a lot of stuff going on, what I really like about Gila's playing here, uh, besides the fact that I really like the way he plays together with Ari Hunik, because sometimes when those two play together, it could get a little bit too much, but here it really Fits, you know, you can also see they're just having fun and at the same time it just works out really well without getting overstated. That's just a question of my taste, obviously, you may or may not agree with me on that. Uh, but um, yeah, I hear that that's really working well and, and there's all this stuff going on with moving, um, especially in the, in the theme that it's moved rhythmically and Gita does, does that extremely well. Uh, and there's some nice examples of how he uses counterpoint also and how he uses a lot of different uh, rhythmical devices. And I think one thing that's really nice about this is also that you can tell how clearly, he doesn't play that many uh, eight note lines really, but his melodic ideas are just sort of really strong statements that are in actually quite simple, but then moved around on top of the form and, uh, and he does a lot with them. And he's very free to move them, especially rhythmically, he's extremely free, which of course also with Ari Hunik anyway, is it, it's gonna be a lot about sort of rhythmical freedom and going to different places. And I mean, they do a lot of different things. They, they go to some sort of halftime Latin and halftime swing and back and forth. And, 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 and that's that whole interplay in how they sort of react to one another and how they go different places. And, and that's what really makes this uh, great to me. And at the same time also how like a, a really, um, like it's a, it's an extremely high tempo but it never gets really dense, it stays open, but also exciting without, so it, so sometimes when you hear open music, it gets kind of boring and, and undynamic, and that's not the case here, especially there's like one place where all of a sudden they just leave this enormous gap and the audience is almost starting to, to applaud, uh, thinking it's the end of, uh, of a solo. So those kind of things are, are just really great moments in how people play together, and that's what, what this performance to me is really about, besides just, being showcase of fantastic musicianship and, and knowing uh, knowing a lot of things to do with with rhythm, uh, which is also a thing that you can take away from this. 
you can tell with this recording that it's something I checked out. Uh, I, I mean, I never actually checked out what they play, but I just listened to a lot because I, I, this is some, uh, a video that I really enjoy watching uh, or listening to. It's not always that I watch it, but I just have it on. Uh, because because there's so much happening, because there's, it's always like surprising where it's where it's going next and, and, uh, and how they, they go from one place to the other or how they get out of moving uh, the theme around or moving uh, the phrases around on top of the form. That's, that's just very interesting. The last video that I'm going to talk about is also sort of an odd video because it's uh, Schofield playing alone together, together with um, Chris Mendoki. And uh, I think it's part of something from a TV show from Denmark, at least uh, it looks like it's from Danish TV. And um, I think what's great about this is also where you can really tell, I mean, the other guys are really about technique and, and it's high tempo and, and there's a lot of stuff happening. And in that way, Sko is, this is a more medium and it's just about completely other things when he's playing. Uh, also, of course, because he's playing in a setting where there's, there's no drums, it's just a duo. But at the same time, I think that's also what's great about this. It's really like a medium, it's really grooving. Uh, he's, I mean, Schofield's always sitting well in the groove. I don't think I've ever heard anything where he doesn't sit well in the groove. But um, at the same time, when he plays, it's also about sound. It's about what kind of sound he gets out of the guitar, how he, how he manages to get a lot of different tones by just picking in different places, using different techniques, uh, how he uses octaves sometimes and calls sometimes, how he comps himself all those kind of things uh, and also like the small really sort of subtle reharmonizations so instead of a half diminished chord he'll use the tritone dominant and really just to get some sort of bluesy sound there's some stuff where he's, um, he's using some of the sort of very typical for him he has a certain kind of lines that he plays when he plays double time uh, and I think he does it also with triplets in this one actually where it's, it's sort of very typical legato thing that he does. I'm not sure where this is because I never really checked it out, but um, it's just when you hear it, you go, ah, oh, that's Schofield. And which of course is a lot of the time with him is you can really hear what, what he's doing. Um, but it's also just nice to hear him play a standard like this one, which is alone together. It's just really an A standard that everybody knows. And um, there's, I mean, you can obviously also tell that they didn't rehearse it. There's nothing going on. It's just like, okay, let's play one, two, three, four, here we go. And then you get this, and it's an extremely great performance uh, for for that also because um, it's, it's still interesting, and, and there's still stuff happening. There's like a small chase at the end of it, and uh, uh, so so that's that's what I one of the things that I really like about this. I always liked Schofield for for that. Um, he's one of the first jazz guitar players I've listened to. Maybe also because of sort of the blues phrasing thing that he has, that I just got that right away. And um, and in that way, I always enjoyed also checking out. I mean, he does. He's done so many different things with his career, uh, and so many different types of music uh, in his own name. But um, it's still just nice also to see him play some standards once in a while. So so uh, that this is a good example of that. Also, some of the stuff he does with the trio with Bill Stewart and Steve Swallow, it's really great to just hear some sort of pretty straight ahead stuff from him, which is not like all the other things that he's also done. Not that they're not great, because I've listened a lot to like records like Hand Jive and Groove Relation and uh, um, what's the other one? Uh, Agogo. So it's, that's, that's also great, but this is sort of really basic and just also to see somebody take a standard and um, really just playing, playing it in a tempo that most of us can really play it in. And then it's a little bit like, okay, this is how you do it if you want to do it right. But I guess that's, that's sort of the best review I can give of it. And that's what I really like about this also. It's like not bragging, just keeping it simple and, and kind of just having fun playing. And uh, in many ways, that's really what it's all about when you're playing uh, jazz anyway. So, uh, so yeah, so that's, I think it's a great example of that. That was my commentary or review of these three videos. Uh, of course, I chose these videos because I really like them. So I think that's kind of clear when I'm talking about them. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm curious. This is something that it could be kind of fun to do maybe more often, um, just to come up with some of the more interesting things that you guys can check out also, because 
it's also coming out of the fact that I, I shared a Spotify playlist um, a few weeks ago on uh, on Facebook, and that a lot of people check check that out and uh, and start to follow the playlist and follow me on Spotify. So um, maybe this could be interesting to make more videos like this. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. Uh, and of course, if you have comments on the videos that I'm talking about, then um, leave a comment on that as well. If you don't like them, if you do like them, or what you like them, if there's something I didn't talk about, because obviously there are lots of stuff I didn't talk about with the videos. But um, yeah, I'm just curious what you think. You know, I mean, it, it's it's interesting to know what you guys listen to uh, and what you like about different things. That's really something that I think is is uh, is interesting for me to know. Uh, in the same way that I, I take it, if you're watching this video, you think it's interesting what I think about the music. And also, in this case, I'm trying to talk about um, some of the aspects of it that I like, uh, which is maybe a bit difficult in a way. Um, but I mean, if something's unclear, you can always ask also. Uh, one thing that you should be aware of is that if you want to post a video and suggest that I check something out, then don't post a video link uh, on YouTube because then your comment is like going directly to spam. It's just immediately if if you didn't post, if you're posting a comment on somebody else's video and it has a link in it, then it's in spam. So uh, I might not see it because uh, my spam box on YouTube is, is is fairly large. There's a lot of spam happening on YouTube, uh, so it might disappear. I think if you want to do that, maybe go to my Facebook page and then leave a message there, uh, because I th you can post on my Facebook page, and that I think I will see. Um, so that might be something if you want to suggest a video or just suggest a name, you know, I mean, um, or something like the, the title of the video, I'll, I'll try and look it up. I won't promise that I'll look it up, but it depends on how many guys, how many people do this. Um, but um, I mean, it's worth, it's worthwhile. It's always good to get some new input and, and more music um, that's curated. There are so, there's so much music on YouTube and Spotify that it's kind of hard to figure out what to check out. Uh, so recommendations in that way are of course welcome. In any case, if this is the first time you see one of my videos, and you want to check out some more stuff on jazz guitar, then uh, subscribe to my channel. I publish a new lesson every Thursday, and I've been doing it for quite some time, so there's really a lot of videos already on my channel. And uh, there's a new lesson coming on Thursday, because this video is, of course, coming up on a Monday. Uh, and uh, I'll see you then, and thank you for watching.